ما اريد من هذا الشعب الا ان يزيد في الحمد والشكر الى الله عز وجل ويزيد من محبة الوطن ويزيد من العمل ومضاعفة العمل لا ما يسعى به من خير له وللدولة والأهل هذا اللي أنا أدوره من شعب وربنا إن شاء الله يوفقنا جميعا على ما يحب ويرضى Servhub is one of the leading facility and property management company focusing on blue color accommodations. Today, with the owner and the CEO, Mr. Sabur Ahmed, a successful man who can make his success story thanks to his deep knowledge and rich experiences. Stay tuned. I would like to thank the leadership of the UAE and uh, their vision and the support and uh, everything that they do for the community, for the country, for the people of the UAE. Uh, it, what's great about UAE is the UAE leadership doesn't differentiate if it's uh, if it's a uh, local national or uh, someone who has migrated into this country, we get equal amount of support and uh, I've never seen this in any other country. So thank you everyone, uh, thank you to the leadership. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to your favorite program Peers of Union which invites the most successful people here in the UAE. Today from Dubai with the Mr. Sabur Ahmed, the owner and the CEO of SurfHub. Welcome, Mr. Hello, hi. So we are so pleased to meet you today, Mr. Same here. Yeah, thank you. Mr. In the beginning, we need more details about you to present you to everyone. Today we'll talk about your experiences here, your uh, successful story. So we need to inform the audience who is Mr. Sabur. I'm Sabur Ahmed. Uh, I'm from India. I had uh, my education in the UK. Uh, I'm an aircraft maintenance engineer by profession. Uh, after my degree, uh, I graduated in 2008. Uh, I moved to Saudi Arabia uh, along with my parents and uh, tried to look for a job uh, in the aviation industry. Although I was unemployed for eight months, no, nobody wanted to hire us. Uh, and then uh, I got a job as an admin uh, in a very small position. And from there, I started my professional journey. Uh, I grew in the organization I was working with. And later, I joined McKinsey and Company uh, in consulting. Um, and 11 years ago, I moved myself uh, to Dubai uh, because Dubai looked like a, you know, comparatively a better place uh, at that time. Um, you know, right now, Saudi has developed a lot, uh, so for, for especially because I was getting married and, uh, you know, uh, wanted to uh, support the family. So I moved to Dubai in 2013. And after 2013, uh, I continued in the job for a few years, but I always had uh, this passion to do something on my own. Um, so then I left the company and in 2017, I uh, started uh, ServeHub uh, with the support of my partner uh, who's from Saudi Arabia and uh, my wife. So, uh, sir, uh, you have a faithful journey and you have rich experiences uh, from many countries and you decided uh, to come to the UAE and uh, especially in Dubai to start uh, your own uh, business. Before talking about your company, let's talk about uh, your journey. So, you have this faithful journey. Of course, you have faced uh, during this uh, uh, long journey lots of challenges. Can you please mention to us some of these challenges? Challenges on the in the journey and the personal personal level. So one reason which I which I why I chose Dubai is Dubai gives an excellent platform for anybody uh, to grow. Uh, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people come with a lot of dreams to Dubai, and uh, I'll call this a dreamland, right? I mean, if you have a dream and you have a passion to follow it, you can be successful. Yeah. 
unlike many other countries, there are a lot of other challenges, uh, legal as well as uh, you know opportunity base, which uh, which doesn't allow a lot of people to fulfill their dreams. So this is why I chose uh, to be in Dubai. Uh, there were many many challenges. Uh, I think throughout the throughout the life. Uh, I mean, if I talk about the personal life, obviously settling into a new country. Uh, I was as I told you, I was in, I was in a job initially. And then, uh, you know, the biggest challenge was to get out of the comfort zone of a job and risking everything to start the business. And uh, if my wife did not support me at that time because I already had a small child, uh, I would if nothing would have been possible. So she said, no, it's your dream. Uh, I'll support you. Uh, you know, let's go for it. So she stood at my back and uh, with her support, I resigned from the job and patched up everything. And then we started a very, very small. Yes, uh, of course, uh, sir, we need our uh, supporters to uh, inspire us and to help us uh, during our journey. So let's uh, now focus on your company, the first step to create your company, the idea. How was the idea and how was the first step? So when we were thinking of starting a business, uh, so when I was doing a job, I was always looking for opportunity and the right opportunity to, uh, to address. Because I believe if you identify the problem and then you can bring the solution, that's where the, the you know the, the business starts. So after a few years of uh, understanding the Dubai market and the UAE rules regulations, we identified that uh, you know the labor accommodation and blue collar services there was a huge need of uh, you know better service. There were a lot of gaps in the industry. There were many things missing, and that's how we came up with this idea of uh, starting this company. Yeah. Of course, uh, sir, Serve Hub, your company is known by its quality uh, services and customers care. Let's focus uh, know more uh, on the variety of services that you are uh, providing today to your customers. We provide a variety of services. So we, uh, we manage uh, accommodations. So we do facility management all the way from security, managing, making sure the the regulations of Dubai municipality are uh, implemented in these labor camps, uh, housekeeping services, uh, technical support services for all the all the people. In addition to managing the labor camps, you also support our customers with transportation services, food services, anything that can be, we can help them and we can uh, support them in order to manage their blue collar workforce. So sir, every business in the beginning, especially it faces uh, lots of challenges. So what are these uh, challenges have you faced in your uh, beginning and what are your strategies to overcome such challenges? I think the biggest challenge for any new business is uh, when you're new, people don't trust in you. Uh, especially when it uh, comes to managing uh, accommodation, which is worth maybe 40 million an asset uh, for the landlord or for the customer who's uh, handing over their their, their employees uh, in your supervision to, to, to make sure that they're, they're managed comfortably. So once we establish the trust with the, with the customer, the business automatically start to flow in. And that's how we became successful in our, our field. But uh, sir, as you know, today we are living in a competitive environment, especially in Dubai. So how are you able to map out a distinguished name for yourself in this field, despite the high competition and the well-known competition here? Uh, for us, the key was always, uh, as I said, delivery, right? So uh, price, I mean, there's a lot of competition on price. And what we tend to do is we uh, we would reduce our margins, although we will make sure that uh, what we commit is, de is being delivered. And we feel very strongly for the blue collars. Uh, you know, we, we feel that these people have come from different countries, different nationalities. They work out, uh, they're, they're one of the core pillars of this economy who are doing the construction, who are, uh, you know, making the roads and bridges and everything. So what can we do in order to make their life better? And with that mentality, when we work uh, and without thinking of too much about, you know, how much money I can make out of this business, uh, things started to fall in place. And that's how uh, I think we were able to do this. And also, of course, uh, uh, sir, to any country, we need a strong staff. We need a qualified staff. So today, how do you choose your staff? What are the quality that are required in your staff? So the quality I always look in my staff is uh, keenness to learn. I, I don't hire people who are, uh, they, maybe there are people who are very skilled, but I always prefer a person who is maybe less skilled, but has the open-mindedness and keen, uh, you know, to, to learn new things and someone who's trustworthy uh, you know because 
we are sitting here and we are managing different things, but our people are on the ground. These are the people who are our eyes, ears and hands in order to execute the company's, uh, you know, work. These, uh, you know, we really hold our company values very close to us. And uh, we feel that uh, work can be taught, but a mentality cannot be changed. So, sir, of course, you will have uh, your own strategies to manage and to direct uh, your uh, business. Let's talk now more about the future. In the upcoming period, how do you see Surf Hub? I see Surf Hub, uh, I mean, as a vision uh, that uh, we want to bring more technology uh, because today in this field, it's, it's only people. Uh, and I want to see how can I integrate technology into this business and, and bring in, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know, robotics or artificial intelligence or whatever uh, to, to support, uh, you know, and make the things better in terms of the delivery to the customer. Sir, of course, uh, as you mentioned, technology and development in uh, technology is necessary in any company and also in our life. So today we are talking about artificial intelligence. Does development in artificial intelligence serve your field? For sure. Uh, see, ServHub is a, my partners are a part of a uh, larger group. Uh, it's called Proven Arabia. We are based on Saudi Arabia. Now, Proven Arabia already have, uh, you know, a robotic company. We already have virtual reality and uh, many other technology companies. Mm -hmm. And I also started another company uh, under the name of Amaco here to bring technology into the field of labor accommodation. And what we are trying to do is uh, basically Amaco is an energy management uh, and energy saving solution. So we, we, we manage labor camps and from our experience, we identified that yes, there is a huge, uh, you know, let's say cost of uh, utilities and energies. How can we bring technology in order to save it? So for two years, we did R&D. Uh, we hired vendors in different parts of the country, of the, of the world, uh, from Belarus, uh, from Latvia, from China. We designed a device that uh, we can integrate with our ACs and we can um, automate, uh, you know, the usage of the ACs. Mm -hmm. So we can schedule when the ACs have to be turned on, turned off, uh, you know, control the utility cost in the in the building. So we already we are going live now. Uh, we're going to launch this uh, company uh, this this uh, this month and commercial uh, commercially. We have been doing the pilot testing and everything. So I, I feel uh, and, and I'm sorry, another idea uh, to add is robotics. So uh, in currently I'm in discussion with uh, with few companies because we also have some cleaning robots. Now, robots are great support to do basic and monotonous work. So I don't look at robots replacing humans, but I look at robots uh, helping and supporting and making this the processes and systems a lot more efficient that can support uh, the overall, uh, you know, uh, work processes and uh, so we're looking at bringing robots as cleaning robots and supporting the current cleaners and making their life easier as well. Of course, uh, sir. So, sir, now let's uh, talk more details about the UAE. Thanks to its facilities, regulations and most important laws, the UAE today attracts people from all over the world to come here and to create their own businesses and projects. So, how do you see these policies? I would say uh, UAE has one of the best uh, policies and infrastructure and, uh, and rules and regulations uh, that I have ever seen across any country. I've lived in Europe, I've lived in Saudi Arabia, India, here, and I've, I've also traveled to many, many countries. But what UAE provides as an individual as a, and especially to entrepreneurs is just amazing. Uh, I mean, as I said, the ease of setting up a company, the ease of uh, getting uh, things done in terms of visas, in terms of uh, uh, you know taxation everything is so easy and so structured here uh, that really helps any new company to establish themselves and to uh, you know to to grow uh, we have we have very li very less uh, i would say barriers uh, that that creates uh, you know challenges in the business as long as i said if you have a good idea uh, there is a passion to follow the idea and uh, you work on it I think UAE is the best place that anybody can be successful. Yeah, absolutely. So, sir, after uh, your rich uh, experiences today, you make uh, your success story. So, let's uh, define the word of success. You know, this word is a subjective word and it differs from one person to another person. So, today, how? Uh, can you define the word of success? For me personally, success is, has never been about money. Money is a byproduct and automatically comes when you are on the right path. So as long as you're true to your values uh, and you are able to do something for the society, for the community, to give back, 
uh, when you when you focus on the on the core values of uh, of of, uh, of human essence, uh, success happens, and uh, money and wealth and everything else just happens automatically. Sir, lots of people from audience, they are your generation and they see from your story something special inspired them. So what is your advice to them? In addition to uh, the great environment, infrastructure, uh, what UAE has unique is the, the vision of the leadership. Uh, at this moment, there are so many new projects which have been announced uh, that are really helping the, the, gom the, the, the companies right, to, to grow. Uh, including ourselves, uh, there was there was a there was a lot of issues during COVID, but uh, at this moment, we all, if all the companies have recovered already from the from the you know COVID downfall, and most of the companies are on the growth pattern. And thanks to the leadership for the vision for the for the for the projects and the, you know the infrastructure that they're building in the country, which is really helping all of us to to grow along with them. Of course, uh, sir. Lots of people from audience they are new generation and they see from your story something special inspired them. So, what is your advice to the new generation? My advice to the new generation would be focus on your idea, focus on the vision, your dream, what you have. Uh, understand what's your strengths and weaknesses to understand your own self is very important and uh, lastly find the support group for yourself this support could be a person within your family could be a person within the community could be a person within uh, uh, relatives but you need that one person or a people group of people who will support you on the idea and then you can grow and there's no limit to, to success. So, sir, of course, the UAE has contributed to your success story. So what is your appreciation message you would like to convey through our episode to the UAE and its rulers? I would like to thank the leadership of the UAE and uh, their vision and the support and uh, everything that they do for the community, for the country, for the people of the UAE. Uh, it's, what's great about UAE is the UAE leadership doesn't differentiate if it's uh, if it's a local national or uh, someone who has migrated into this country. We get equal amount of support, and uh, I've never seen this in any other country. So thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you to the leadership. Thank you so much, uh, sir, for this meeting and for these uh, details. It was my pleasure talking with you today. Best of luck. My pleasure too. Thank you. Dear audience, this is the end of our episode. Watch us next week. Goodbye.